Good evening. You're watching the news from the Saltanato of Oman television. First, the headlines. 27 people are killed in clashes in the Yemeni city of Taiz as Saudi Arabia announces $274 million in humanitarian aid for the chaos wrecked country. Clashes erupt amid the suburbs of Libya as negotiations to form a unity government continue in the Moroccan resort of Shrihat. And Israel says it will transfer 474 mi or 70 million of withheld tax revenues to the Palestinian Authority. And President Abbas says a joint committee will discuss outstanding sums. Good, in good evening once again and thank you for joining us. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. The Seismological Center in Sultan Qaboos University announced that a 3.07 tremor occurred at Sea of Oman at 3 p.m. this afternoon, 160 kilometers away from Masqat. Some citizens in the governorate of Masqat, including myself, felt the tremor. The Seismological Center said that no effects or physical damage was reported. At least 27 people were killed in the Yemeni city of Taiz in clashes between loyalist forest, uh, forces and rebels, as well as Saudi-led coalition air raids, medical sources said today. Residents said the city in southwest Yemen was rocked by explosions and gunfire overnight as the coalition-backed forces for, of President Abdul Rabbul Mansour Hadi battled Houthi rebels. Nineteen rebels, uh, four soldiers of a mechanized uh, army unit loyal to the president and four other pro-Hadi fighters were killed. Yesterday, coalition warplanes carried out heavy air strikes on a presidential palace in Taiz, Yemen's third largest city, and of positions held by special forces units loyal to the former president. Residents and security sources said rival fighters clashed last night in districts of Aden, while pro Hadi forces, with the support of air strikes held off rebels battling for the past week for control of Aden's uh, refinery, 15 kilometers to the west of the port city. Saudi Arabia, which is leading a three-week-old air war against rebel forces in Yemen, announced today $274 million in humanitarian aid for the chaos to wreck the country. The pledge, which the official SPA news agency said was ordered by King Salman, followed a United Nations appeal yesterday for $274 million to provide emergency assistance to the millions affected by the conflict. The kingdom stands with its Yemeni brothers and hopes for the restoration of security and stability, it said. Quoting an official statement, the United Nations says hundreds of people have died and thousands of families have fled their homes in the war. Aid agencies have warned of an unfolding humanitarian disaster. The United Nations said it was trying to narrow differences between Libya's rival uh, parliaments uh, over an agreement aimed at forming a unity government to end unrest uh, tearing the countries apart. The differences emerged in written observations by the two sides on the agreement that envoy Bernardino Leon is trying to clinch, said Semi Samir Ghattas, spokesman for the United Nations mission in Libya. Leon did not meet the delegates yesterday, as he had done since the talks uh, to thrash out an agreement resumed two days earlier in the Moroccan resort of uh, Skhirat. But he reportedly spent the day reviewing written observations to try to find common ground. Meanwhile, clashes uh, broke out in a district and a suburb of Libya's capital today, home to groups opposing an alternative government controlling Tripoli and parts of western Libya. Shells hit several residential buildings, but there were no immediate reports of casualties. 
A doctors worked late last night to treat victims of a car bomb explosion that killed the three people next to the U.S. consulate in Erbil, a rare attack in the capital of Iraq's northern Kurdish region. A cleanup operation continued in Baghdad this morning following an explosion at a car dealership in the neighborhood of Habibia. The blast killed at least 15 people, 26 people were wounded, and at least 11 cars were burned. Meanwhile, Iraqi ground forces secured the perimeter around the country's biggest oil refinery and entered the vast complex amid heavy clashes with Daesh militants. A top military commander in Iraq, Salahuddin province, said ground forces entered the Beji oil refinery today, days after a number of Daesh militants carried out a large-scale attack and briefly took over a small part of the complex. Israel said today it would transfer $470 million of withheld tax revenues to the Palestinian Authority following talks between a senior Israeli military officer and Palestinian officials. Israel had condemned the Palestinian move to join the ICC, saying it was a unilateral step that undermined prospects for a negotiated peace settlement. According to the statement, Israel's state-owned electric corporation said it is owed by five 510,000 by the Palestinians. President Mahmoud Abbas informed a meeting of the Palestinian Liberation Organization of the coming transfers today and said a joint Israeli-Palestinian committee would discuss outstanding sums. Daesh group claimed to have carried out a deadly suicide attack in eastern Afghanistan today that killed at least 33 people and injured more than 100 in what, if verified, would be the first major attack claimed by the jihadist group in the country. A person purporting to be Daesh group spokesman said that the group claimed responsibility for the bombing outside a bank in the eastern Afghan city of Jalalabad. The explosion happened outside the bank when government employees and civilians were collecting their monthly salaries. The United Nations gave a higher toll, saying 35 people had been killed. President Ghani strongly condemned the attack, which saw children among those killed. Beverly Hills, one of California's richest neighborhoods, has been singled out by the state's governor for its high water consumption during a harsh drought. More details in the following report. Home to Hollywood stars, the chic neighborhood of Beverly Hills is full of huge houses and well-watered lawns. But faced with a record drought, California's governor has called on everyone to cut water consumption by 25 percent. And because Beverly Hills currently uses much more than the average amount, residents here are being asked to make even bigger reductions. I think 35 percent is a very aggressive goal. There's no doubt about it. it I am worried about what we're going to have to implement to hit that target. But I think that the state is justified in its concern about water. Among the measures being considered is a limit on watering gardens to just twice a week, with fines for those who disobey. Similar rules have already cut water use in other California towns, and some argue utility companies should go further. Question. We need to raise rates for water use, especially for the higher water users. One question that I think is, has a moral dimension is, um, just because you have more land, does that entitle you to use proportionally more water? Because in the end, at this point, the water that people put on their grass is the water they and us will not be able to drink in the next several months. In the face of the longest drought on record, some have already started to make changes, like this gardener who's using less thirsty plants. We're planting fewer flowers like impatiens now, for example, because they're very shallow rooted, so they dry out very quickly. We don't plant flowers like that anymore because they need too much water. But changes like this remain the exception in a town not used to cutting back. Beverly Hills does have larger yards, a um, lot of landscaping. Um, in the past, you know, water has been very plentiful. It is a huge culture change and way of thinking that we need to change with our citizens, and I think that's common across um, Southern California. Um, thinking about how to do it differently and how to look differently, and, and uh, it'll be a challenge. It's looking like a challenge that's not going away anytime soon. 
While there have been occasional showers, California will need a long and heavy wet season to officially declare an end to its drought. You're watching this alternate of Oman television and still to come in our news uh, bulletin. Omani environment and nature embodied in fine arts exhibition in the Wilaya of Rostak. Welcome back to the news from this alternate of Oman television. Maskat Street in Singapore is one of the most prominent landmarks that embodies the deep-rooted relations binding the two countries. The street is located in Kampeng in Singapore, which attracts around 12 million tourists annually, with many commercial shops that have the aroma of Islamic history and the East in general. The street also reflects some symbols from the heart of Omani capital, Maskat, embodying the prosperous present of the Sultanate and its achievements. It also contributes to promoting the touristic potentials of the Sultanate. This made the national carrier of the Sultanate of Oman Air to open a direct route between Maskat and Singapore to acquaint tourists with the touristic features of both countries and commercial potentials in the Sultanate. Citizens of the Wilaya of Nahal in the Governorate of South al Batina concluded their celebrations activities on the occasion of the safe return of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos to the homeland. The conclusion ceremony included the performance of a number of artistic shows that embodied the meanings of affection and allegiance for the country and its leader. They also expressed uh, through all these activities their happiness for the return of the builder of Oman's modern renaissance. The conclusion ceremony was presided over by His Excellency Nasser Sir Bin Hamoud Al Kindi, Secretary General of Royal Court Affairs. An Ishad evening was organized in the Wilaya of uh, Qurayat in the love of the leader of the country. The event, which was held at the celebrations ground in the Wilaya, came as part of the citizen celebrations of the return of His Majesty the Sultan to the homeland. It included 11 shows uh, performed by participants from inside and outside the Wilaya. The event was presided over by His Excellency Khalid bin Hilal al Mawli, Chairman of Shura Council. The value of real estate transactions in the Sultanate by the end of February 2015 stood at uh, Real Oman 1 million. 38,800,000 uh, growth by 137.8% compared to 2014. The fees uh, collected on these transactions stood at uh, Real Oman 7.700,000, a uh, growth by 26.2%. The value of the sale transactions declined by 2.4% to record uh, Real Oman 179.4 million. The number of safe transactions also declined by 12 12.2 percent record at 12.962 uh, compared to 14,759 during the same period in 2014. The value of mortgage uh, contracts increased by 241.6 percent to hit uh, 849.3 million Omani reals compared to 248.6 million Omani reals during the same period in 2014. The value of swap transactions as the of the end of February 2015 stood at uh, 2.1 million Omani reals by the growth of 110 uh, percent compared to the same period in 2014 which stood at uh, 1 million Omani reals. The number of uh, swap contracts uh, grew by 3.4 percent to record 210 by the end of February 2015 compared to 203 contracts during the same period in 2014. The total passenger traffic through Maskat International Airport has increased by 9% to 2,410,000. 
2,098,098 passengers until March 2015, compared to 2,213,116 passengers for the same period of 2014. Statistics released by the Public Authority for Civil Aviation, PSEA, show an increase in the arrival passengers by 9% to 1,221,704 passengers until March this year, comparing to 1,116,500 23 passengers for the same period of the year 2014. In terms of air cargo traffic at Muscat International Airport Aviation statistics indicate an increase in the total unloaded and loaded freight by 8% with total shipments 32,165 ton compared to 29,701 ton in the same period in 2014. Salala Airport has witnessed an increase by 13% in the total number of arriving and departing passengers to 217,669 passengers until March 2014 compared to 193,383 passengers for the same period of 2014. As for the movement of air cargo at Salala Airport, cargo traffic has decreased by 21%, bringing the loaded and unloaded cargo to 407 ton until March 2014 compared to 336 tons in the same period in 2014. The total value of private deposit at the commercial banks in the Sultanate as of the end of January 2015 rose by 11.1% .1 Omani Rials, 11,325.6 million compared to 10,000. Uh, 10 1,195.2 million Omani Rials in the corresponding period in 2014, according to the monthly statistical bulletin published by the Central Bank of Oman CBO. It pointed out that the gross value for this deposit as of the end of January 2015 includes the time deposit stood at 3,175.9 million Omani Rials, 4,037.2 million saving deposit, and 3,902.5 million Omani Rials on demands deposits. As for the banking indicators for the commercial banks as at the end of January 2015, the bulletin said that the broad money and the clear to the deposit in reals was 13.7 percent the combined money and clearance to the gross deposit was 13.9 percent the total percentage of the loans to liabilities was 97.2 percent a fine art exhibition was hosted by an Nahal Center in the Wilaya of Rostak, which embodied the creative skills of Omani talents. More than 200 participants of female students in the Wilaya were displayed that reflected Omani nature and environment. The exhibition included various types of fine arts. The event came to highlight works of Omani talents and encouraged students to utilize local environment elements in their works. The event was held under the auspices of Janab Saida Basma bint Fakhri Al Said. And now for the general weather forecast, clear skies will prevail over most governorates of the Sultanate with dust accumulation and decrease in horizontal visibility over the governorates of Buremi and Adhaira. Clouds might also accumulate during late night and at dawn on the southeastern coast. Winds will be northeastly light to moderate along the coast of Sea of Oman, while it will be southwesterly light to moderate on the southeastern coast and northwestly light to moderate along the rest of the Sultanate. Seas will be slight to moderate with a maximum wave height of 2 meters.
You're watching the Sultanate of Oman television and now before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. 27 people are killed in clashes in the Yemeni city of Taiz as Saudi Arabia announces $274 million in humanitarian aid for the chaos-wrecked country. Clashes erupt amid suburbs of Libya as the negotiations to form a unity government continue in the Moroccan resort of uh, Sghirat. And Israel says it will transfer $470 million of withheld tax revenues to the Palestinian Authority and President Abbas says a joint committee will discuss outstanding sums. With that, we come to an end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.